We could develop an extensive theory of non-deterministic finite automata with lambda transitions, but there's not really any point. Because if L is a language over some set of symbols, there's a finite automaton that recognizes L if and only if there is an NFA lambda that recognizes L. In other words, there's no real difference between finite automata and non-deterministic finite automata with lambda transitions. First, we'll prove the easy direction. Suppose we have a finite automaton that recognizes our language. Then we have the transition function that takes us from the Cartesian product of states and symbols to the set of states. And we'll define a new transition function, which will have as output the set that includes just the state that's output. Then our new transition function is going to be a function from the set of states and symbols to the set of subsets, and so m corresponds to an NFA lambda. Going the other way is going to be a little bit harder. To show that any NFA lambda is also a finite automaton, let's see if we can construct it. So consider this NFA lambda shown. Now, the reason no NFA lambda is automatically a finite automaton is because our transition function goes to the set of subsets, while for a finite automaton, that transition function has to go to the set of states. But when we converted a finite automaton to an NFA lambda, we redefined the output so that our transition function, which sent us to a single state, sent us to the singleton set consisting of just that state. In other words, we let our output states correspond to sets with one element. So what if we let our input states be sets as well? First, we'll introduce states that correspond to the singleton sets. So we need to construct the transition function. So if we're at state set including A and we get a zero, then we go to set including A. Meanwhile, if we're at set including A and receive a one, we go to the set A, B. And note that this output state is a new state in our finite automaton. Again, let's see what happens if we go from our singletons. From B and a zero, we go to. And from B and a one, we go to. So we have to introduce another new state, the state consisting of the states A, B, and C. Now, since this state includes the accepting state C, it will also be an accepting state. Then finally, if we are at C and get a 0, we go to. And if we're at C and get a 1, we go to. So now we have a couple new states we have to figure out. So we have to define what happens from the states ABC and AB. So from AB, if we get a 0, we go to. And from AB, if we get a 1, we go to. And from the state ABC, a 0 or 1 will take us to. And now we have a finite automaton with no lambda transitions. And the proceeding suggests a general strategy for constructing a finite automaton from an NFA lambda. For each state and each symbol, define the transition function from the singleton to be the same thing that our NFA lambda would get. This may give us some additional subsets of our power set. So for every subset and symbol, we'll define our transition function to give us the union of every possible location we could arrive at. Now, since the number of subsets is finite, we'll eventually exhaust the possible states. So for example, let's find a finite automaton equivalent to the NFA lambda shown, 
and indicate the accepting states. So our initial set of states are going to be the singleton A, B, C, and D. So if you're at A and receive a 1, you could go to A, or you could follow that with a lambda transition to B. If you're at A and get a 1, you could go to A, followed by a lambda transition to B. If you're at B, a 0 can only take you to C, and there's no lambda transitions. A1 could take you to A, and you could lambda transition back to B. If you're at C, a 0 will take you to C. A 1 could take you to B, or it could take you to C, or it could take you to D, and there's a lambda transition back to B, but we've already included that. And finally, if you're at D, a 0 can only take you to C, and a 1 can only take you to C. Now, notice that we've introduced two new destination states, the subset A, B, and the subset B, C, D. So let's see where those take us. So if you're at A or B and receive a 0, then from A, you might go to A or B, and from B, a 0 will take you to C. Likewise, if you receive a 1, from A, you could go to A or B, and from B, you can also only go to A or B. If you're at B, C, D, then a 0 and a 1 will take you to... And again, notice that we've introduced two more subsets, A, B, C, and A, B, C, D. So, if you're at A, B, C, or A, B, C, D, then a 0 or 1 will take you to... And so now, if our set of states is this list of subsets, this is a transition function for a finite automaton.